It's honestly crazy to think that 2018 is already halfway over. At this point, the gaming industry has gotten plenty of things to talk about this year, and some of those didn't even revolve around Fortnite, believe it or not. The PlayStation side of things, we saw some major exclusives to add to the already ever-growing and dynamic, successful lineup of exclusives. Xbox gamers also got some exclusives, new IPs and sequels that brought people together. All the great Nintendo Wii U titles made their way over to the Switch and got new life and a new chance to be successful. So this year has been pretty good and it's only halfway over. But like many of you, as somebody who doesn't necessarily have the time or the money to play every single big release and every game that catches my attention, I of course have missed out on a lot. I mean, way more than six, but I decided to make a list of just six of them because I figured there are six months down of 2018. So I've taken a game from January, February, March, April, May, and June of 2018 that I did not play, but looked good, got a lot of press, got a lot of coverage, people talked about it, high reviews, and I almost feel like I should play it or that I'm missing out. So without further ado, I'm Ryan Ramakrishnan, and these are six of the best 2018 games that I have yet to play. January 2018's notable game that I haven't gotten around to is Monster Hunter World. Monster Hunter World is a game that appealed to a lot more people this year than any of the games in the franchise did in the past. It really seemed like Capcom was drawing in newcomers and gamers less familiar with the intense, over-the-top, and seemingly really complex systems of the Monster Hunter franchise, and this game seemed like a really big step to get more players. Personally, I was interested when it came out. I thought it looked epic. I was really amazed by all of the gameplay that the Monster Hunter franchise has had, except how it looked so much better on the PS4 and Xbox One as opposed to the 3DS for example and also they were kind of talking about how they were trying to get more players in and once it released a lot of people were feeling this game and it became huge. It was all the talk in January. Unfortunately I have not played it but there's a really good reason why I haven't and maybe it's not a good reason for everyone but personally I don't do co-op. The thing is Monster Hunter World is a game that heavily relies on cooperative play. People are talking about all the time about how they're playing with their friends and how this game sort of relies on that and you sort of need to play co-op and that just really turns me off. I can't even really find myself having any interest to play this because of that. If that wasn't the focus on this game's gameplay, then I probably would have already got my hands on Monster Hunter World, but not only does the series new take on it, trying to make it a little more friendly, still seem to be intimidating to a player like me, but also, like I said, I just can't get into a game that relies heavily on cooperative play because that is just not my thing. So will I play Monster Hunter World? probably never. The big game of February this year that I haven't gotten to is Shadow of the Colossus. The PS2 classic Shadow of the Colossus got remade for the PS4 earlier this year and I thought that it looked really amazing. All of the talk online and everywhere I went that was saying about how Shadow of the Colossus is such a great game that it is a true PlayStation classic that needs to be experienced and then how the remake was looking to be that much better just got me so excited but I was never necessarily going to play it. I remember when it came out in February of this year, it got a lot of praise for looking absolutely stunning. And well, I can't deny that it does look pretty stunning, but also that it was just such a great game to play through and has such an amazing experience. And it is like epic in scale and there's a deep story, but it's told in a seemingly unique and subtle manner. And I think that this game seems really interesting and I want to play it, but at the same time, I don't think the gameplay looks nearly as entertaining to me to actually get me to pick this up. That may be a genuinely unique and unpopular opinion, but I don't know that Shadow of the Colossus looks like a game that I really want to play. Maybe it's something I'd watch. Maybe it's something I'd like to watch one of my friends play or see someone do it on YouTube because I think that it does seem kind of amazing, but at the same time, I don't think that this gameplay looks nearly as epic as the idea of the boss fights in their scale. And I just don't know that it's really something I'll play. Also, when it came out in February, I was busy with some of my backlog from 2017 and a little known game called Celeste. So will I ever get the Shadow of the Colossus? Maybe. A game from March 2018 that I did not play yet, but looked at was A Way Out. Brothers, The Tale of Two Sons is a really spectacular little experience. I thought that it was delightful when I played it a few years back. And then the developers announced a new game called A Way Out. And honestly, I was really excited when they first showed it off. So it came out in March and it got some pretty decent reviews. I think that this game looked really good. But the one thing that drew me away was, of course, 
the reliance on cooperative play. Now, unlike the aforementioned Monster Hunter World, this game is actually only playable in co-op. Like, you actually have to. You can't play any other way. So, pretty much right then and there, I knew I could not play a way out because I don't do those kind of games. In March, I had reached out to some of my friends, and I said, hey, maybe we'll play this game. What do you think? Looks cool? Like, yeah, maybe. And the truth is, I never truly wanted to play it because there were so many games that were single player only. And that's what I do. I don't do cooperative games. So this really sucks because I do think A Way Out looks good. I'm actually really impressed by how the gameplay works with your friends uh, based on what I've watched. And I think the story seems really cool. And the gameplay just seems like a lot of fun and kind of different. This is like a very fresh experience. And it's nice to see indie games like this. And I'm just so interested in what A Way Out is. But I truly don't have anyone that really wants to play it, and I'm not so sure that I even want to play a game that is only co-op. So, will I get around to Way Out? No. April's title that I didn't get around to yet, and may or may not ever, is Yakuza 6, The Song of Life. The Yakuza franchise is finally starting to see a lot of popularity over here, and I think that's great because it used to be one of the series that was pretty much only big in Japan. Yakuza 6, The Song of Life came out this year in April, and I thought that it looked really good. In fact, I believe the Yakuza series is something that I would truly enjoy. So then this, of course, begs the question, why have I not played Yakuza 6, A Song of Life? Well, think about it. Yakuza 6, that means there are at least five games prior to that. Where am I getting at? Well, I haven't ever actually played. I've never played any Yakuza games. In fact, I've actually wanted to for a little while now, but as I've looked at the series and where it is right now, it's a little weird. Yakuza Kiwami is a remake of 1, and then Yakuza Kiwami 2 comes out this year. And then there's also Yakuza 0. But then Yakuza 3 through 5 seem to only exist on PS3, if I'm not mistaken. So this would require me to actually get a PS3, which I have, but to actually fire it up, I haven't done that in years. So this totally has me at a loss. Now sure, I could just hop right into Yakuza 6 after watching some videos about the story so far, but I just don't know that I want to do that because I'm sort of purist about it and I really want to experience the whole story of the main character and whatnot and not just jump into the sixth game. That's a deep sequel. So will I actually play Yakuza 6, The Song of Life? Yes, I actually definitely will because this series greatly interests me, but it's going to require me to play at least five more games before that, so it might take some time, but I believe I'll get there one day. Taking the spot on this list for May is Detroit Become Human. The latest game from Quantic Dreams and David Cage is Detroit Become Human, and it honestly looks really good. I am genuinely interested in the narrative. The problem is, I don't know that these games interest me enough to play them because of the gameplay, or lack thereof. David Cage's games like Heavy Rain and Beyond Two Souls have always grabbed my attention. The trailers and the press talk about some pretty interesting narratives and choices too. Detroit Become Human is no exception. In fact, I believe that I've heard there are just an amazing amount of choices to make that can lead to different paths. I find this world of androids and the sci-fi setting and future that is almost feasible to be super compelling. And I think that I'd love to watch this as a movie. In fact, I might actually watch someone play through it on YouTube maybe. This game totally has my interest, but not enough to play it. I don't actually think that I'm at all down to play a game like this because when I played the demo, and even when I've played the other games just a little bit here and there from Quantic Dreams, I don't know that I like the interactive movie style of gameplay. I'd like more real like video game gameplay. And unfortunately, Detroit Become Human turned me away because of its style of gameplay. But it does seem so interesting that my answer to my question might be not what you expect. So hey, will I ever get to play in Detroit Become Human? Yes, I actually think I will. But probably when it's at a discount and when I have some more time because it's not a super big priority. But like I said, I am pretty interested in this game. The June title that I did not play is Mario Tennis Aces. In June, the Nintendo Switch got a new Mario Tennis game and apparently it's really good. Based on word of mouth and what I've heard, this is a big improvement upon the last Mario Tennis game for the Wii U, which was apparently not so good. Now, Mario Tennis is not a series that I've ever played. In fact, the truth of the matter is, I don't think I've ever been interested in it. I've gotten my Switch, I've played some different games on there once in a while, and change it up. And I'm willing to pick up games that actually work for the whole pick up and play experience. Something you can start up, play for a bit, and then just turn your Switch off. You know, something to have on the go. I believe Mario Tennis Aces really does appeal to that kind of gameplay and play style. But am I actually interested in Mario Tennis Aces? No, I'm really not, because I don't like tennis. I don't really like sports at all. That's just not my thing. 
and tennis is certainly at the lowest point when it comes to sports. Mario is a franchise that I love, and I actually do enjoy some Mario sports games. But Mario Tennis and all its gameplay mechanics, which do seem interesting and kind of deep and a lot of fun for sure, don't appeal to my taste in gaming. I would like a new Mario Sluggers game or Mario Strikers, but Mario Tennis has never gotten me. So will I actually play Mario Tennis Aces? No, I most certainly will not, even if it's the best the series has gotten to date. So those are six games that came out in 2018, one per month that I haven't played and why I haven't gotten around to them or may never. Now I want you guys to leave me a comment. Let me know if you played any of those games, what you thought about them and why I should or should not check them out after all. And of course, more importantly, let me know your favorite game of 2018 so far. We've had a lot of good games. I did play some. I played God of War, Far Cry 5, Celeste and some more. So it's not like I haven't played any new games this year. But, like I said, let me know your best game of 2018 so far, or what you played the most and had the most fun with. So subscribe if you like this kind of video, and leave a like if you enjoyed it, and ring that notification bell to stay tuned because I upload gaming videos like this and all sorts of different stuff revolving around video games as often as I possibly can. So thank you guys so much for tuning in.